Okay, so classical computational neuroscience is all about modeling individual neurons, but we have around 86 billion neurons. And uh, so we cannot do that to model the brain that way. That's why we, are other, we have other paradigms as well that we draw inspiration uh, from, from them, such as uh, statistical mechanics, quantum mechanics, statistical field theory, and many things that we do in uh, physics. So Wilson Cohen tries to, there are two person, and they try to model it as a, like a mean behavior of neurons. And we have uh, excitatory neurons and inhibitory neurons. And nowadays we know we have modulating neurons as well. It means that they, for example, by producing some modulators such as dopamine, they, they, they work in populations, so they affect all of the neurons. So, uh, for example, they affect neurons and suddenly all of them becomes inhibitory. But for the moment, for this lecture, assume that we have only excitatory neurons, around 80% of your neocortex, and 20% of your neocortex is inhibitory. It's just an approximation. So this is, I want to explain this important article in 1972. This is very influential and seminal work. So uh, let's talk about it. So they model excitatory neurons as, they call it E. For example, at time T plus tau, if we just uh, go for time, one time step, uh, we will see that this is the model and this is for inhibitory. And you know, it is designed such that when you increase your inhibitory uh, neurons, the number of, I mean, the average n n n number of inhibitory neurons, suddenly you will notice that even in this formula, you will see that this one will reduce. The same thing for inhibitory. If we just increase excitatory, then something happens for inhibitory. And it has this dynamics, which, which I want to talk about it and show uh, what is the origin of that. So we introduce a model which emphasizes not the individual cell, this is a mistake that we, that we do, because we have 85 billion neurons, although some of them are active, but still it's computationally prohibitive. So let's see this new approach. So we have excitatory neurons, and they have a, it's a recurrent loop with itself. So we can consider E as a recurrent neural network and I as a recurrent neural network, but there is a connection between them as well. So these are the weights that are going from excitatory to <clears throat> inhibitory and from inhibitory to excitatory. So in biology, biology in nature wants to reduce local redundancy. And physiological evidence for the existence of spatially localized neural populations is provided by the work of Mount Kessel and Hobo and Wiesel. So we say proportion of excitatory cells firing per unit time <clears throat> at instant T. So this is the proportion of excitatory cells that are firing at, at time T. And this is the proportion of inhibitory cells firing at time T. We know the resting state is when, when there is no uh, population of inhibitory neurons and they are at rest. The same thing for excitatory. And you know that this is refractory periods. This, is, this region, all of these region is called refractory period. But, but this region is a relative refractory that we don't talk about in this, in this video. So you can see that at this time, this region, it is active. And we are talking about that. So the absolute refractory period has, if, if, if the absolute refractory period has a duration of R millisecond, then the proportion of excitatory cells which are refractory will, eventually, will evidently be given by this. 
This is the proportion of excitatory cells. And the same thing you can say that the proportion of excitatory, which are sensitive, so they are either refractory, refractory cells, and they are either sensitive. Sensitive is just the opposite of that. And uh, so, for example, <clears throat> you should know what is afferent neurons and what are afferent neurons. Afferent neurons, like this, they go from, are called motor neurons, because they are nerve fibers responsible for carrying signals from the brain uh, to the nervous system in this direction in order to initiate an action. In other words, they are the neurons that tell your body to perform an action, such as removing your hand from a hot pan. And so we have afferent neurons and efferent neurons. Afferent neurons for motory, but afferent is for sensory information. And you know that uh, the thalamus collects all of these sensory things, auditory, and it's just, a, it's, you can see it simplify to say that it is a gateway to the cortex, but it has many other, uh, many other uh, functions as well. The functions giving the expected proportion of subpopulations receiving at least threshold excitatory per unit is a function. So this is the distribution, this is the, dis this is the distribution of individual neural threshold and delta is your response function. Because depending on that, because for example, what is the probability? So theta, and this is a kind of distribution D, D of theta. For example, at, at particular theta, this is the threshold. What is the probability? that your threshold is, for example, 0.1. What is the probability that threshold is something else? What is the probability of that? That, for example, uh, is 0.1. The probability, for example, could be 25%. Or if you summarize this, if you accumulate, so the, the probability that your uh, threshold is less than this number. We can sum it so it becomes the integral of that. And that's why we call it response. And the same thing, we can define uh, this C of X, which is called the synaptic distribution. This is synaptic distribution function. And your X of T is just the average excitation per synapse. Because depending on how much excitatory neurons you have, you will have a different response. And you see that response function is monotonically increasing. As you see, even at, look at this formula. If you just uh, add more neuro, add more, then the integration will increase. So when theta is increasing, the integral is increasing. So it's monotonically, we say, is increasing. And what is good for that? We know that these are sigmoid functions, kind of sigmoid functions. And you know, sigmoid function is monotonically increasing. And this has the nature of sigmoid function. And these are localized dynamics of a localized population for both the excitatory and inhibitory neurons. And you know, uh, we will see that C2, these parameters will play an important role if you want to do a phase analysis, phase space. In the phase space, you will see the dynamics of the dynamical systems. Uh, this is, so it, everything is depends, for example, if you have x dot, x dot is equal to f of x, this is a dynamical system, f could be a vector, vector field, then if f of x is equal to zero, you get all the fixed points. And your fixed points depends on some parameters. And so we will see that, for example, if uh, just like bifurcation analysis in nonlinear analysis, that some of them uh, produces uh, limit cycles, some of them at some regions, it's just a stable th a manifold, some regions it's unstable. In some regions of these parameters, it has a hysteresis, 
and many other phenomena uh, that you see in nonlinear dynamics. But because uh, so because these time things is very is very hard to deal with these. So we simplify everything, just like in physics, in quantum mechanics, in statistical mechanics, in also in control theory, also in uh, aerospace engineering. Many of the observables that you have, you average over time. So everything becomes a kind of, um, for example, Boltzmann used to do this very much, and. It's very, it becomes very controllable, it becomes easy to understand. So if you do this, so instead of this, we are, we are talking about bar. When bar, it means the, so it's just the time coarsening of that. And now you can write the formula like this. So the fixed points, if you want to analyze this, the fixed points is very your vector field, this is the first uh, entry of your vector, when it is zero and the other entry is this, just like x dot is equal to f of x, f of x is a vector field, f1 of x and f2 of x. If you want to know the equilibrium points, you put f1 of x equal to zero and f2 of x equal to zero and analyze the parameters because for different parameters, you have different behaviors systematically, because in neuro, system neuroscience, we, we look at these parameters to see how, how the dynamics of your brain is changing, depending of, and these parameters could be related to uh, the modulatory neuro, uh, neurons, the amount of dopamine that is uh, produced, and many other kind of neuromodulatories. And you know, neuromodulatory trans, uh, transmitters are a kind of transmitter that uh, changes the structure of the channel, the ionization, everything, and they do in population. And so uh, people say that we, are, we have two kinds of neurotransmitters. One of them is the ordinary neurotransmitter that are just for sending messages, but the other one is neuromodulators. Neuromodulators, they change the structure of a group of neurons. It's very interesting. And also, it is depending on how your gene is expressed. Because each neuron inside your brain, for example, in the neocortex, each neuron corresponds to a different gene. And so the gene expression is different. And so the, 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 not, the kind of neurotransmitter that is produced is different. The kind of neurotrans, neuromodulator that is produced is also different, depending on the location of your neurons. So these parameters, uh, if you analyze them, you will see very interesting phenomena that will occur in your brain. And the, so if you want, as I said, you put it equal to zero because now X dot is F of X and this is E of X, excitatory neurons, inhibitory neurons. So if you put D of E, uh, so if D of E, so this is D of E, over T and D of D of I over T. This is your vector field. So if you put them equal to zero, like this and this, then you will analyze the phase space. E and I, E with respect. Now with respect to time, sometimes it becomes stable. Sometimes it's oscillatory, but it has some overshoot. Just like, non just like in control systems, you have different behaviors dependent on the uh, parameters of your robot or anything else. And uh, so we, this is the kind of function logistical that we designed. And depending on that, you know, the phase space expect, uh, excitatory neurons with respect to inhibitory neurons, it could have very complex dynamics. Even when you take a, a cup of coffee or hot chocolate, you will see that you, uh, lots of things is happening. Some of the excitatory neurons uh, are reduced and inhibitory are, uh, excitatory are increased and inhibitory are reduced. And so it has a very interesting dynamics. And it has many different phenomena that you will, you will observe. Sometimes, it's, uh, also, sometimes it converges to a limit cycle, 
and many different phenomena, hysteresis and those things.